I hit the homie, the big homie, Jay-Z, right? I said to my nephew, I said, yo, listen, I have to ask him this straight up. So I said, yo, why, who is the people that's on um, in the NFL? And, and he said to me, and I'm sorry for anybody who don't understand. And he said, the white guy called for, for 50 cent. Mm. So I said, who's, who's the white guy? I'm, I'm big in this Jimmy Iovine. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, Eminem called directly for 50. And he said, that's Yo. his guy. He said, I can't do it if I can't bring 50 up. But that's his guy. Now, that's beautiful. And guess who's Dre's guy? Young guy. Let's make the noise. Early February may seem like a lifetime ago for some out there, but it's only been two and a half months, and a lot has happened within those 10 weeks, not the least of which is the Super Bowl that would be won by the hometown team in the Los Angeles Rams. But another key thing that happened in the Super Bowl was the now very legendary Super Bowl halftime show that featured major rap legends like Snoop Dogg and Jay Z. It also had Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and Eminem. But apparently, Eminem had a demand for the show that has many raising eyebrows. We'll break it down for you, but before we do that, go ahead and do us a favor by leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the bell icon so you never miss an upload from us. Do you want to win an iPhone 13 Pro Max? Maybe a MacBook Pro? How about $500 cash? You decide. All you have to do is comment the secret hidden message somewhere in this video. That's it. Oh, and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so we can keep affording these giveaways. Winners will be announced on the last day of each month. Thanks for watching and good luck. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video, the report. So given the title of this video, you might have already guessed what the stipulation was for Eminem, but we'll talk about how all this came up because it's important. During Snoop Dogg's recent Drink Champs interview, co-host NORE revealed that he was given information when he spoke with Jay-Z about the Super Bowl halftime show. I said to Jay-Z, I have to ask this straight up, who's going to perform at the NFL? He said, the white guy called for 50 cent. He went on. I said, who is the white guy? Jimmy Levine? And he said, no. Eminem called directly for 50 and he said i can't do it if i can't bring 50 with me and ore went on to call m and 50's relationship spiritual to which snoop dogg agreed of course that's his guy and guess who dr dre and guess who's dre's guy it's me now we want to be really clear on something here while nore might be saying this is a real report we haven't heard this from jay-z himself granted you'd have to wonder why he would lie to snoop dogg who was at the show himself and tell something that could easily be debunked but it's still something to keep in mind and in the immediate crowd of that podcast room the revelation went over rather well, as the team applauded the various rappers for their loyalty to one another. But there was a certain someone who apparently didn't like what was said, and that was 50 Cent. The reaction. Yep, part of the reason that this story is a story is that 50 Cent had some very unique reactions to it online, and they were very much directed at NORE and Jay-Z. Why would he have to say that should be the question? NORE, your big homie is running around trying to look like a partner. NORE, your big homie is running around trying to look like a gay painter, lol. If you can't tell, that last line was about Jay-Z. And in fact, he made a follow-up post showing off Jay-Z with a rather interesting haircut and said, why did he say the white boy? Why didn't he say the biggest rapper artist in the world? As you can see, 50 Cent certainly didn't have a problem going after Jay-Z. And that might be a mistake in the long run, given the power and sway that Jay-Z has in the community. Not to mention, Jay-Z, if the report is as claimed, didn't have a problem letting in 50 Cent for his bit during the show. But there might be a bigger question among some of you who are watching. And that would be a question that is similar to what 50 Cent originally asked. If this is true, why would Eminem feel compelled to ask Jay-Z permission to have 50 Cent appear in the show. Well, as in most things, it has to do with the relationship between these three men and another in the form of Dr. Dre. Jay-Z goes to bat. Not surprisingly, this all starts with Jay-Z, whom you might be thinking right now, but Jay-Z wasn't in the halftime show, right? Correct. He wasn't a physical part of the show, but he was a part of it behind the scenes. Jay-Z, who is the official live music entertainment strategist for the National Football League, made sure to get the best rap artist in the world when they were able to do the halftime time show. But what you might not have realized is that the NFL was very hesitant to give these artists the green light, so much so that Jay-Z almost quit his role if they didn't let Dr. Dre and crew do what they wanted. This was actually confirmed by Jay-Z's ride or die from before in Snoop Dogg, who said that after the performance at halftime, Jay-Z was the first one to come down and show love. Jay was the first one that came to the dressing room when I got off stage. We had 300 Entertainment CEO Kevin Lyles in there. Kevin Lyles had Jay on FaceTime, trying to show him where we was at. So then he came down, and as soon as he came 
came in, he hugged me. We hugged each other tight. It was as if we won a championship. Like, you know, when you're genuinely happy for each other, people don't understand. Me and him are the ones. He's the one on the East. I'm the one from the West. And he indeed noted that the NFL tried to censor the artist so that they didn't go too far in the NFL's eyes. And Snoop talked about how Jay-Z had words on that notion. We love each other. Like, not secretly, like publicly, we love each other. It is what it is. So it's like for him to go to bat for us and tell the NFL, F that, they perform or I quit. That was the most gangster out of everything. When the attire and kneeling and all this, you can't wear your gangbang. Jay-Z hit me like, wear what the you want to wear. Peace to the gods. And a word, dope. Doing it for the rappers. Continuing on with our story from before, this is really all about respect. As we just showed you, Jay-Z went to bat for the rap community in regards to this halftime show. And so Eminem had to go to Jay-Z to get permission to get 50 Cent on the show. Why? Respect. Pure and simple. He knew that Jay-Z had done the rap community a huge favor by getting them this show. And he, Eminem, knew it could be better if they got 50 Cent on it. And it was only fair in his mind at least that 50 Cent be on it. Sure, he could have made a plea on social media or tried to con the man into letting his friend in. But Eminem, again being a man of respect for his rapper forefathers, knew that the best way to do things was to just ask and see if it could be done. And it was. And because 50 Cent's appearance wasn't advertised, there were actually rumors of Ice Cube showing up, but that didn't happen. It actually made his appearance all the more fun and interesting. Plus, Dr. Dre was helping lead the whole thing in regards to the stage performance, and 50 Cent is one of Dre's prized pupils. So Jay-Z was showing respect to both Eminem and Dre by letting 50 Cent have his time on the show. And don't forget, it clearly worked. The halftime show was reportedly more widely viewed than the game itself, pulling a whopping 103.4 million views. Not bad for a halftime show that was almost too controversial. Dre, Eminem, and 50 Cent. If you don't know the history between these three men, you're honestly missing out on a very key part of rap history. You see, after splitting off from NWA, Dre went on to be a solo act in all the ways that matter, including releasing hit singles and albums via Interscope Records. But then he made Aftermath Entertainment and struggled mightily. That is until he met a young artist doing underground rap in Detroit named Marshall Mathers. You know, Eminem. He took Eminem under his wing and Slim Shady was born. It was the Slim Shady LP that was Aftermath's first true success, but it wouldn't be its last by a long shot. Eminem respected Dr. Dre for everything he did for him, and the two dominated the decade in various ways. And that included when Eminem found someone himself to help out, 50 Cent. Yep, Eminem found 50 and teaming up with Dre allowed the young rapper to make Get Rich or Die Trying, the album that dominated in every way, shape, and form, and solidified this trio as some of the most important rappers of the age. These three have been through wars together, have dominated the music industry, and yes, had their fair share of troubles, but they stuck together, including in 50 Cent's infamous feud with Ja Rule. Eminem came and helped him do a diss track on Ja Rule that was so damaging in terms of the insults and lyrics, it was said to be the true downfall of Ja Rule's career. So yeah, they're tight. And then Eminem gets the call that rappers were going to be doing the Super Bowl halftime show, and it was going to feature him, Dre, Snoop, Lige, and Lamar. That likely floored Slim Shady, but as Wonder Woman once said, I think we can do better. And thus he asked for 50 Cent. Because love him or hate him, he was and still is one of the most influential and impactful rappers of his time. His money managing skills aren't the greatest, but his music was the definition of hype at its peak. So hearing all that, you might be asking another question. Why insult Jay-Z like that? Now that you know all the threads and ties that make this story rather interesting, the biggest question now is, why did he diss Jay-Z like he did in those social media posts? Well, the answer, quite simply, is loyalty. It's possible that Jay-Z didn't see the whole context of the interview, especially if he only saw title snippets online, as those are meant to get clickbait without telling the whole story, and thus thought that they were implying that Eminem had to beg for 50 to come on, or that Eminem was being a brat by demanding 50 to come in, or else he'll leave. And that second one, the one about not calling Eminem the best rapper artist ever, was just an addition to that, because a lot of people seem to forget that Eminem was the best-selling musical artist from 2000 to 2010. Not the best-selling rapper, best-selling musical artist. He beat everyone in sales, that's how good he was, and 50 Cent probably wanted to make sure there was some respect put on Slim Shady's name, Impact. Regardless of what happens now, or what really happened in the lead-up to the Super Bowl halftime show, there is one thing that can very much be said, and that's that this halftime show needed to happen. Rap doesn't get a lot of respect, and many think, including the NFL apparently, that they're just a bunch of thugs and criminals, even though they're not. They also say that their music is terrible and infinitely full of hate, violence, and other material. That's very bad, and not all of it is like that. The fact that so many people watched this halftime show proves just how grand it can be when the right people are there and are allowed to be who they know they can be. And yeah, 50 Cent got to be a key part of that moment, and you can bet he's grateful. It's just that some things need to be worked out at the moment. And there you have it, everyone, a look at the situation that may have been at the heart of the Super Bowl halftime show. Do you believe the report that was given? Do you
you think that Eminem really wouldn't have done the show without 50? And what about 50 Cent's other antics against Jay-Z? Will that backfire on him? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.